Well, hello and welcome to Travels with Geordie. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter and I live on a wooden boat here in Victoria, British Columbia with my pup, Geordie. Say hi, pup. Yes, that's a good boy. Anyway, um, we're restoring the old wooden boat as we live aboard, which is turning into quite an ambitious project, which we'll be doing over the next couple of years, probably. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, absolutely stick around and consider subscribing. I should also point out that I give away a Travels with Geordie t-shirt with every episode. So if you'd like one, just leave a comment below and uh, I pick at random from the first 24 hours worth of comments and if your name comes up I'll send you one. I should also mention that uh, there's been a lot of interest in the shirts so I actually opened a little uh, store and uh, if you're interested you could also buy a shirt if that's a route you'd rather go and I'll leave the link for that down in the comments below as well. Cheers! Hey Pop! <coughs> Welcome back to Travels with Jordy. We're back aboard motor vessel Zephyrus today, uh, carrying on with the repower and the rewire and the replumb. Yeah, we're, we're getting lots done in here. Um, we're held up a little bit on the repower, waiting for some parts, but that's fine because there's lots of wiring to take out. I think miserable. Oh, 20 generations of various wires stuck in and around, but I got them mostly out. A little bit left to do down around here. Um, got some temporary AC reconnected there, and I'm in the process of removing the overheads uh, both in the uh, wheelhouse and the aft cabin here. Here is the main electrical uh, panel, I guess you'd call it, on a motor vessel Zephyrus. It's been here for a hundred years or more or whatever. It's all glass fuses, which is fine. Some of it started out reasonably neatly. In fact, there's even some stuff labeled. and, But other stuff, generations of various things. Ah, if I can run you in there, excuse me. I don't know how much of that you can see. Um, it's all got to go. It's all got to go. Um, all of this wiring, all of it is going to go. Um, let me show you the real 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 interesting stuff how about this this bulkhead you can, i don't know if you can see that old blade switch in there old battery switch there is more gear electrical gear on this boat um i've just disconnected the batteries so that as we work we don't make any messes i am quite certain 90 percent of this isn't currently doing anything um as is much of the plumbing uh we're going to replumb the boat at the same time get rid of this old residential copper uh, yeah. Anyway, lots to do. But there's some wicked battery cables on this boat. Start that big old Perkins. Okay. It's just, just taking wires out. It's easy, right? I didn't shoot much video uh, while pulling wire because there's really not that much to it. So basically we had a ton of wires put in coming off this big spool. Um, a lot of the wires are going in the overheads because Really, on a, on a simple boat without a lot of electrical systems like Zephyrus, most of it is electrical lighting. And the lighting is relatively sophisticated on this boat, probably one of the most sophisticated parts of the boat electrically. Um, and as a result, most of it goes in the overheads, uh, which I want to get right because we're going to be closing this in with overhead material, and I don't want to have to get back in here ever, hopefully. So I'll just give you a quick little tour of the basic approach. Um, there's a bunch of wires that have to go through the the, uh, the deck because of course there are horns and lights and such up there, spotlight, etc. There are wires up here for the wiper motors. Um, we're not going to have any uh, instrumentation up high on this boat. Often you'll see someone, you know, with a little chart plotter or something or other, with the exception of the radio. The only thing that's going to be up here will be the radio. So that just needs power and the antenna. Um, we're fortunate in that the boat had these chases put on. If I just go over here and get this little control, and you can see it's been channeled out on the back and down both sides of the boat here, there's a hole cut there and a hole cut there, and the chase can go on both sides. Uh, so I'm able to get quite a few wires up into the overheads uh, relatively simply, and that's very, very handy. Um, this big group of wires here is because I'll have to have junction boxes up here, right? basically just terminal strips where I connect them all up. For instance, if I say nav lighting, well, all the nav lighting will come together, all the navigation lights will come together up here, and so only one wire goes down to the helm for the nav lights. Again, for domestic lighting, you know, the lighting that lights the space, um, there's quite a few junctions up here. Well, that's nav, but 
we have two lighting circuits that will go up here that will light what I call the little cozy lights that are here. We have some sconce lights here. We have a whole row of LED pot lights along the edge. Um, it's quite a lot of interesting lighting going on here. So basically, wow, wires, lots of wires. Um, most of the overhead wires are done, both in the uh, wheelhouse and in the aft cabin. So this is all the stuff for the galley and further back. Um, there's more for nav lights and more lighting. So what I'm doing today is starting to do what I mentioned here before, junctioning these up in junction boxes, doing them as neatly as possible so that we can put the overheads in the next day or so. Stay tuned, I'll show you how we're doing all that. So we've got a bunch of Blue Sea electrical stuff, um, the DC panel, we've had that for a while, some more lighting. And we also have here that you can see is the uh, wet elbow and the exhaust port for the Perkins, some new motor mounts for the Perkins. Um, and my depleted electrical supply, so we have some new stuff to go in there. Anyway, we'll be using up um, the bulk of this vast supply of very expensive Blue Sea toys in the next little while. So let's get started on that. The basic building blocks of what I'm doing to make junctions in the overheads. I'm using these four um, gang uh, terminal strips. Now a terminal strip basically only has individual rows of connectivity. In other words, that screw and that screw are already connected together. Well, that's really great if you're connecting a whole bunch of, I don't know, switches that you want to have short lines on and then you want to be able to carry on into the instrument panel and I'll show you I'll do that later. But they're also really handy when you add these little jumpers in that I can jump these two together and these two together so that all four of these screw terminals become positive, let's say and I put the jumper down here and all four of these screw terminals become negative. So the neat thing about that is I can feed positive and negative in here, let's say for the lighting circuit. And then I have three more screws I can attach uh, branches of the lighting circuit that would carry on, which solves that problem I showed you earlier in the overheads. Um, and that works pretty slick because I like to be able to put a, just one um, terminal on each screw uh, so that it's easy to uh, diagnose. If I ever have to take one off, I can just take one off. I can find out what's going on. Hopefully, I'll never have to do any of this. If you do this well enough, you never look back there for 50 years. But it's going to be done right. So, so I've mounted the first terminal strip up here. And uh, I'm actually screwing it right to the inside of the cabin top. But it's plenty thick, so only just touching in. It'll make it nice and tidy. So I'm going to start with, uh, let's see, probably, well, this is... Uh, Electrical feed two. So I'm going to feed these right in here, and these are basically going to be the beginning of my electrical feed two, um, which is lighting. I'm, I'm, I'm splitting all the lighting circuits into two circuits so that there's two complete circuits in the boat. Sort of my house thinking again. So instead of having four cabin, um, wheelhouse, aft cabin, each on their own circuit, I'm spreading the circuits all through the boat. It's all LED lighting, it'll take no current at all. But this way, if the circuit goes down for one reason or another, short circuit or something, you'll never be completely in the dark. So that in every part of the boat, there is some lighting on one or the other circuit. And I'm only having two circuits, so I have lighting feed one, lighting feed two. All right, this will be lighting feed two, let's get it set up. So this is the first wire that's gonna go onto this terminal block. And this is the new style. Uh, I'm gonna imagine I'm gonna put the first ones on the inside. So I don't really need very, very much insulation removed. So we'll take it off there. I won't strip that against the bright work. And uh, pull that off. So new wire for boats uses yellow as the ground. You may mostly be familiar with this, but the idea being uh, in the old days, positive was red, negative was black. Well, that's cool. But for the 110 wiring, this is 12 volt after all, and the 110 wiring, the AC, um, you'd have three colors. You'd have white, um, black, and green. And so the black is hot, the white is neutral, and the green is ground. So they were worried about confusion between the black in the 12 volt wires and the black in the 110 volt wires. Um, of course, 110 wires are three conductor, but there are places on this boat where I'm using three conductor um, wire not for 110 where you have like bilge pumps and things like that where you need three conductors but I mark it very carefully to make sure that's not a problem. Anyway, they call this safety wire for the last little while. Um, all marine wire has been um, yellow for ground. So I'm going to strip these off and we'll do some crimping here. Now in the old days I was always a fan of soldered connections 
And apparently the marine industry, much like the aviation industry, has decided that crimped connections are the only way to go. And I accept that because they do a pretty darn good job. So I have got myself a genuine Anchor, this is quite a few bucks, um, crimping tool that does the dual crimp, one on the for the wire and one for the strain relief. And it's as simple as tucking that in there, making sure it's well engaged in the barrel, and then pound this puppy down. Excellent. And that is a bulletproof connection. Yeah. I've seen some tests online where they put big weights on these to see how heavy they can pull on it. Pretty impressive. Okay, so we'll do the other one. There we go. All the way in. And give that a good squeeze. All right. Those connections are almost done, but not quite, because now we heat shrink them. Excellent. Now they're a bit vulnerable for a few seconds, so I won't mess with them too much. Uh, let's just take this moment to take the screws out. And here's the first two connections done for a rather lengthy process. Try to do this nice and neat, nice and square on there. All right, let's do a few more. I'll do the final tightening at the end. I'll put this in a nice little clamp to keep that square. All right, let's do a few more. Okay, there we go. So we have four circuits. Well, actually we have a feed circuit and three branch circuits off of this. Nice and neat and uh, well looked after. All right. While I run the wires sort of temporarily, I don't mind using these little um, zip ties with the eye screws or eyelet or whatever you want to call and I just keep them loose and it just keeps everything sort of tidy and out of the way but once I've got my final bundle of cables I like to put a proper p-clip um, this is a one inch and that's probably a hair too big for here but I'm going to put it on and we'll see uh, if in time I might replace this with something a little smaller I only have half inch and one inch right now and that will make a nice bundle right there. Oh, it's hot in here. There we go. Good. That is as neat and tidy as I need it to be, especially in the overheads that we'll never see again. Done and all set and tidy and everything like that. What you might want to do is just bend down the terminals ever so slightly so that the body and the wire of the terminal is down from the screw. And what that achieves is something that <laughs> some people believe is absolutely required, and there's some sense in it, and that's called a drip loop. And that's an opportunity to make sure if any condensation forms on the wire, it doesn't drip down onto the uh, terminal itself, the screw. Um, so by making sure that this whole section, all the wires are lower than the actual terminal screw, any condensation that ever forms here will drip off down here somewhere and not work its way up to the actual terminal. Of course, that's all <laughs> brass and stainless, and so it's hard to say that there's really any risk there, but uh, we'll just try to be ABYC uh, certified here. Cheers! Finishing up the wiring and the overheads. Uh, you followed along as I did this little um, collection of terminals here. I've uh, wired up the wipers. Uh, the spotlight uh, over here you can see is the steaming light, uh, the other wiper, this wire is actually for the GPS antenna and this set of wires is for the horns. Now you'll notice the horns and the good example might be the steaming light. I did butt splices to existing wiring. Now that's not ideal. I'd rather have run the cable up through the deck into the light and not had any butt splices to old wiring. However, that light is bedded. The wires are coming through, unfortunately, with silicone, which is sketchy as heck. I just can't make it part of this project to run these wires properly. But you'll see I've left a nice big loop so that if I ever feel like handling that properly, I'll just extend that wire right up through, re-bed it properly, reseal it. Likewise with the horns and um, the spotlight over on the other side. So anyway, almost all dealt with. What I like is uh, all of these connections are in a single uh, overhead bay so if I ever had to do any work in any of this I just take down one section of overhead and I have access to that. So if we move aft a bit, staying in the wheelhouse, um, again wired up through here. This is the 
uh, starboard running light, the uh, the marker light outside. I am going to run that wire out to remove the light and do it properly. This is just a little um, cabin light. Over on the other side, we have another set of junction blocks. Um, not quite as tidy as the ones I did up front. Of course, they're just as good. They're just, the wires are coming in so many different directions, it doesn't end up looking quite as tidy, but very functional, very, very happy with it. Uh, a couple more wires hanging down here. These will be for some sconce lights we're gonna put on here after. I haven't even found any that we like yet, so that might be a ways away. Uh, other than that, that's about it for the wheelhouse. So if we carry on aft, into the, I always hit my head there. Why is this boat just that much smaller than me? Anyway, so into the galley, we have another junction for um, lighting power. Wired up this switch. This will control three lights. One, two, three. Uh, so that's pretty much set. There's another circuit for some under counter lights. Uh, I need another junction box to deal with that. Uh, most of the wiring in the head is done. The wires run aft for both electric for lighting and the nav lights are done. Um, there's a nav light here. The aft white uh, light is wired off of this. Uh, and this is for more of the cabin lighting. So lighting and nav lights and most of the um, operational wiring is done. Wow. Um, well, with the exception of a few hanging wires here, but mostly just lights to install and stuff. So it's coming along really well. I uh, have to reassemble these cabinets. You can see <laughs> daylight out through some cracks. Um, this is a good opportunity to show you some really nasty repairs. I don't know if I've talked about this before. There were two shelf cabinets here, uh, both sides of this porthole. The aft one was okay. You can see a reasonably well done repair done up there. And you can see a lot of goopy epoxy from some repairs done at some point. But wow, when you get up here, big patches, lots of goopy epoxy, most of which, tons of which anyway, was had dribbled down behind the cabinet. And for me to get this cabinet off meant some fairly heroic work with a fine tool and a crowbar. It wasn't nice. So I got to tidy that up before we can put that back. Um, that's about it for today. Uh, I'm going to carry on with some work in the galley. Got to do some wiring in for the propane detector, the water pump, things like that. Pretty mundane stuff. Hey, cheers. If you're going to live aboard while doing a major refit on a boat, it really is handy to have a pickup truck. I gotta say, um, I don't know how I would deal with all the lumber, engine, other sorts of transport issues if I didn't have a truck while doing this. I keep thinking that maybe someday it's time to let go of the truck, but not yet. I love this truck. Okay, so this is more um, consumer masonite, pretty cheap stuff, which we're going to use for the overheads in uh, my friend's boat, the same way I did on mine. I have to admit, it's super cheap, super clean, super tidy, super effective, not very nautical. Yep, well it's time to get some overheads into uh, MV Zephyrus. So we have here five sheets of that beautiful white masonite. I'm going to cut through all five at once with the saw, just like I did when I did my boat. This boat is a little bit smaller, but a little bit smaller when you're dealing with sheets of 4x8 make a big difference. In other words, there's only one place on the whole boat here halfway between the bed and the galley that you can actually put a sheet of 4 by 8 Okay, so uh, huh, scribed, I mean not scribed, marked, laid out, uh, clamped together, and uh, I'm going to cut these into some strips. The neat thing about it is that in three cuts we get uh, 4 times 5, 20 pieces. Yeah. All the wiring in the overheads is done. I've got everything looked after. Um, this junction setup is all done. Uh, everything's out of the way. Any little nails and tacks and staples and stuff are out of the way. Uh, these two junctions are set. This is a light, uh, for a light that'll come down. This is a light that'll come down. This is a light. Uh, everything in here is done. Bathroom's all done. Power comes all the way back here. Uh, this is for a sconce that's going to go there. This is for the puck lights that are going to go there. And this junction is done. Uh, this is some slack for the stern light uh, in case that ever needs to be rewired. I want to be able to pull some slack up. And this is for the puck lights on the other side. This is for the switch. Okay, I think we can start putting overheads up.